On the following day, when the people who were standing on the other side of the sea saw that there was no other boat there, except that one which his disciples had entered, and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but his disciples had gone away alone, however other boats came from Tiberias, near the place where they ate bread after the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they also got into boats and came to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. Then they said to him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. Therefore they said to him, What sign will you perform then that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you, that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Today we're looking at John chapter 6, verse 22 to 40. In this passage we see the Lord crosses over miraculously to the other side. He brings the disciples to the land, and we see this this dialogue, this interaction between him and the multitudes. First, they, from verse 22 to 25, they're like, how did you get here? This is amazing. Uh, and, and it's important to see this because later on they're going to ask him for a sign. Now, these are the people that have already seen him cast out demons and heal the sick. They've already seen him and they were fed by him. Uh, uh, from five loaves and two, two fish. They saw this. These are the people that already wanted to make him a king. And the Lord sees them and sees their intention, sees their desire, and knows that it is still desire for the ego, the desire for the self. And the question that, he, and that, that we are faced with today comes from his rebuke to the people. He says, Most assuredly I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. The question that we are faced with is, why do you and I seek Jesus? Why do we seek him? Is it possible that one may seek Jesus, even seek a religious life, and seek even service for the sake of the ego? Is this possible? For the sake of the flesh, is this possible? The answer is yes. Even piety and righteousness and, and, and a sense uh, of, of service and a sense of uh, being a follower of Jesus and seeking after Jesus can still be led and motivated by the ego. This is how twisted the, the human soul can become. Seeking gain for the flesh by seeking Jesus. 
he calls them out on it completely and says to them, you are not seeking me because you saw the sign which is him himself. He is the sign that is given to us. But here specifically, it is the sign of the five loaves and the two fish, the feeding. That for them, it's to recognize him as, uh, actually to recognize Moses as a type of the one that was to come feeding the people in the wilderness by his own authority, not through prayer, but just his own power. You did not come to see me because of this sign, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. St. Augustine has a beautiful uh, uh, saying where he, it sounds like he's writing from our day and age. He said, how many people come running to the clergy because they have this or that problem with their business asking for a blessing, or they have this and that problem with someone in court or whatever. And, and it sounds just like today. Seeing people following and seeking after Jesus for some sort of flesh or some sort of benefit to the flesh or some sort of blessing for them that is temporal. Instead, he says, why don't we seek him for his sake? I know that the fathers have identified three reasons why people seek him. The first is the fear of punishment. The second is the hope of reward. And the third is out of a desire for loving union with him. These people fall into the second category. They're not afraid of some sort of cosmic punishment or anything like that, but they are seeking him for reward and too often we've allowed ourselves even to teach our children to seek him out of fear of punishment or or for some sort of crown or blessing or reward that they will receive we must focus on the real reason why we need to seek him the only reason we need to seek him is out of love for him because he is our life. And we'll see in the rest of this beautiful passage that he is our very food. He is the bread of life. Have a beautiful day.